Our special guest on the program today, and it's indeed a pleasure to welcome him to our studios, is Mr. Ewell Gibbons. And Ewell, a welcome to KX Television. Well, thank you. I'm enjoying North Dakota. <laughs> Very good. Ewell, of course, is noted for many, many things, among which uh, nutrition expert, organic gardening expert, we could say, natural food expert, uh, just an all-around uh, nature boy. We well, still say I boy, think, can't we? I think, yeah, I think I'm better known, though, for wild foods than any other thing. I'm, wild, I, uh -huh. Yeah, I... Uh, my my big field is to know which wild plants are edible and what they taste like and how we can fix them so we can enjoy them. Uh huh. Of course, uh, yet from wild foods, I would imagine we could still say that there's a, a nutritional value that hasn't been refined out by somebody. Oh yes, yes. See, I have done some of the exploring there myself. Although there are a great many of the wild foods that simply have not been explored for nutritional benefits, we mm -hmm. can judge that they are nutritious just simply by comparing with other uh -huh. plant-related plants. We can judge that they are, but uh, uh, there's a, a great deal of research that needs to be done yet in this field. What brings you to North Dakota, you Well, I'm traveling around now trying to get acquainted with people on the local level because Grape Nuts thinks that uh, my commercials would be more effective if people could uh, know, see me and know that I'm, I'm really for real. Right. In other <laughs> words, get down to the grassroots level sure. and then eat the grassroots. That's right. right. Get down <laughs> and eat the grassroots. That's right. Uh -huh. So uh, it's, you've been in what, Bismarck and Minot? Was that your two stops in North Dakota? Fargo. Oh, you also were in Fargo. Yes, I was uh -huh. in Fargo. I, I had a lecture at uh, at Fargo uh, at the North Dakota State University there on Monday evening. Mm -hmm. Very nicely attended. A very wonderful group of people that were there. I met with quite a group of them on Sunday evening too. So I certainly did. Uh, I got a nice welcome in, into North Dakota and found some wonderful people here. Also, you uh, found some nice weather. Yes, I sure did. Yesterday was uh, was something to write home uh -huh. about. Wasn't that beautiful? And especially when, uh, you know, people, of course, you will generally think of North Dakota as uh, and freeze, you know, until about the middle of summer. But uh, when you look at the national weather today with the uh, yeah. snow all over the place and rain and flooding, and here we sit nice, high and dry and mild. Yes, and, and you know, it was just, you could hardly have a better day than yesterday. And we had uh -huh. the, few little fluffy clouds that were up there purely for decorative purposes. And right. Did you happen to find anything interesting? I know you told me you went out foraging a bit yesterday. Yes. Did you find anything that's indigenous to North Dakota that interested you? Uh, not, uh, not things that you wouldn't uh, find in other uh -huh. places. Uh, actually, because it's rather early in the year yet, it will be more likely the naturalized plants that uh, get ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. the, the dandelion is exactly right now, just exactly right, both here and in... Uh, uh, the other town, other towns mm -hmm. that I have visited, uh, it's just just perfect. And uh, of course, another thing that is exactly right is, uh, are just becoming right right now is the stinging nettle, which is a tremendously nutritious plant and a very good tasting one too. You know what? I one time I was reading Pepys' diary, it was written over three hundred years ago, mm -hmm. and I found in it a recipe for making a nettle pudding with a stinging nettle, and I made it. Uh -huh. And it really is a nice dish. It's not a pudding, it's not a dessert. You'd think with a name like a pudding, it'd be a right. dessert, Something, you know. So. Mm -hmm, but sweet. this is made with suet and meat and rice and nettles, and it's a main dish. Mm -hmm. And you eat it with some gravy over the top of it. Uh -huh. And it really was good. It was tremendous. I wish I knew what stinging nettle looked like. The stinging nettle, oh, Anyone who's ever ran barefoot around this country knows what knows it is. Knows what stinging nettle is. It stings your ankles. If you, if you have any doubt about it, if you think you found it or not sure of it, uh -huh. take a plant and rub it over the back of your hand. Uh -huh. And you'll soon know whether it was stinging nettle or not. <laughs> It'll make itself <laughs> it very makes, obvious. Yes, and it, uh, but you have to gather it with plastic gloves and then just wash it and put it in a pan to cook. Mm -hmm. Use kitchen tongs. I use plastic gloves to gather it with and then I use kitchen tongs to handle it to put in the pot. I don't add any more water, just what water clings to it after I wash it off. Uh -huh. Cover it and cook it until it's done. Add some butter and salt to it and you have one of the finest vegetables I have ever eaten. It contains tremendous amounts of, of vitamin C, ascorbic acid, or, vi or pro vitamin A in mm -hmm. keratin. And it has a higher protein content than any leaf of material ever before tested. When I took that into Penn State University, when they tested that for protein, they thought I was kidding them. They, they thought uh -huh. I'd sprinkled some kind of uh, <laughs> soybean meal or some uh -huh. kind of uh, high protein concentrate on it. And 
they went out and gathered some more of their own before they would believe that they were actually getting that high protein content mm -hmm. in an ordinary leaf. But it is a, uh, we don't know, again, there, we don't know for certain what, how good a protein it is, you see, because the protein itself has not been analyzed. We don't know what amino acids we're going to find in mm -hmm. it. And this is true of a lot of things in the wild. We have built a civilization here where we can send men to the moon very easily. We can put them out in space orbits. We can photograph the whole surface of Mars. We can split mm -hmm. the atom and get all kinds of power from it. We don't even know the simple chemical composition of about 90% of the plants that grow along beside the sidewalk. Right. So the person is looking for new worlds to conquer only needs to go to the nearest vacant lot. <laughs> That's true. And he true. can find all the, all the research material to last him the rest of his life. And he will find it fascinating research and also some that may very well present things that we can use. The University of Vermont has been doing some tremendous work with, for instance, with antibiotics in higher plants, mm -hmm. uh, where they're finding a great many curative things in uh, such ordinary things as the jewel weed and the onion and a few things mm -hmm. of this kind. Well, one thing I think that uh, perhaps it's a broad statement to make, but. I, th I think we could say, Yule, that this country, to some extent, uh, for a long time, has been what uh, I would say nutritionally dumb. Yes, uh, I very much welcome this change around to where mm -hmm. we have now a new concern about nutrition. Of course, any, like any movement this way, it's going to attract a kind of a nutty faction, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I generally, I think this is a very healthy sign that people are becoming more concerned with foods and nutrition. It certainly is an improvement over the young people's diet of a few years ago when they were living on soft drinks and potato chips. <laughs> right. Very true. And uh, I think many strides are being made, too, uh, as I'm sure you know about, in treating uh, mental disorders. Even they found that nutritional deficiencies in these fields oh, cause yes. mental disorders, oh, they cause they, illnesses, yeah. they give susceptibility to illnesses. And when uh, natural foods, for one thing, or natural vitamins, rose hips, uh, this yeah. sort of thing are introduced, uh, it makes just a world of difference. Yes, I uh, have a friend who works with the Heifer <coughs> Project, and he was talking about some of the uh, t small villages that he'd found where everyone in the whole village practically was uh, malnourished and were mm -hmm. actually suffering in, from some degree from pellagra, and consequently were, they were mentally disordered uh, to some extent, you mm -hmm. know. And these people raised pigs. They couldn't uh, raise, seem to raise a garden. They couldn't fence it well enough to keep the pigs out. Uh -huh. uh, so someone tried to introduce the wild plants, and the poor people wouldn't eat them because they were introduced this way as something for the poor people to eat. Mm. Now, who's going to eat them in that kind of... Right. You give it the kiss of death, you uh -huh. know. Definitely. When I go in talking about wild foods, I come in and talk on the television shows, or I, I go and talk to the Chamber of Commerce, or to the Rotary Club, or the Kiwanis, or the leaders of the community, and you get them all out there running around together and getting that food, within the mm -hmm. others will, too. Definitely. Because you don't lose face, and you've got to be careful about that, because... Uh -huh face is a very important thing in this strange culture we have in America. Very <laughs> true. <laughs> Offhand, how many books have you written now, Yule? I, 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 I have not many. Uh, well, kind of what I've written, I've written seven. Uh -huh. uh, six of them are, well, I've written a lot more than that. I wrote some back before the time that never did see publication. Oh. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have uh, six published. I have one at the publishers now, which is finished, but not, uh, not yet published. We have to hold it up because of a copyright deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one underway, which has about uh, about two thirds finished. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've never had a, pen a book go out of print. Uh, this book, "Stalking the Wild Asparagus," has now sold over half a million copies. Excellent. And so it's, it had very wide acceptance. People are getting back with nature again. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad to see this. I mean, we have been too long considering nature an enemy to be conquered or a, a menace to be avoided. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is just reestablish harmonious, creative, intimate involvement with nature. Mm -hmm. Have a real relationship with it. Then we'll see why nature needs to be saved. Then we'll see why we're going to have to institute these certain programs to preserve and improve our environment, to make life worth living. Mm -hmm. We won't do that if we keep considering nature an enemy. That's true. I Who wants that. to save their enemies? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. So as far as the ecological movement, I suppose uh, you've been also very big in that besides the natural Oh, yes, foods. very much so, because this is my chief interest. I would like to see people becoming re-involved with nature in a new and better way. Mm -hmm. 
with new ideas about the nature of nature, that it isn't all just this fierce struggle for existence in a, a competitive way, but mm -hmm. rather it is very often life living as communities. And the fittest is very often that life form which best learns to cooperate with other life forms about it. Right. I find all kinds of unexpected kindnesses and mercies in nature. Why does a berry have that wonderful fruit around its seed? Mm -hmm. It does it so it can offer it as a free gift to passing animals and birds, mm -hmm. and that they will eat it because it's good, and in doing so they will help to scatter the seed and help to propagate and disseminate that species. Mm -hmm. It grows that fruit so I'll go down there and eat it. And the fruit tree could get along without me and I could get along without it, but both our lives are richer because we have a relationship with one another. Right. A very good point. Perhaps one thing we should uh, throw in, uh, as you say, you've written six books, and if the folks would be interested in finding out uh, some of the things as far as, what, a little recipe perhaps, a free item we could tell oh, them about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have this thing right here. The Taming the of the Wild? Taming of the Wild is a uh, a recipe book. These I helped to develop some of these, and then they were uh, tested in the uh, kitchens at General Foods. Uh -huh. And they, I wrote a forward to this, uh, telling you why you should eat wild foods. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and you and, can get that free, right? Yes. Uh, if anyone wants this uh, particular recipe book, well, all they have to do is write to this address right here. Just write to that, send your address, and that's all you have to send. You don't have to send a box top or money or... Uh -huh. <laughs> and they'll send it to you absolutely and free. It'll come back to you. And maybe after reading that, then they'll go out and buy the rest of your books. Yes, I mean, they might have to buy some grape nuts to carry these, uh, these things out. But <laughs> uh, uh, the, That's the name of the game, though. Well, if you don't, well, just add some breadcrumbs to it instead of the grape nuts. Uh, we don't it. care. Uh, <laughs> either way, it'll work. Yule, I want to thank you so much for taking time out from your busy schedule and uh, stopping in to visit with us today here on our program. And uh, good luck on your trip to Butte, Montana. And uh, keep spreading the word about natural foods. I'm all for it, and I know that the people, once they find out about it, will be too. Thanks for being with us. All right. Well, thank you for having me here.